And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. Welcome to the Weighing In Podcast. We are only a couple days off of what was considered possibly one of the greatest cards ever in UFC 300. We've got all kinds of things that we can talk about, especially when you're talking about Max Holloway and what he did and everything. But my man, how you doing? I am so proud of your son. I just want everyone to know. I'm not, I'm not going to say, say anything, anything about, about it. it. But yeah. Kellen, I'm proud of you, brother. You're a good, you're a good boy, but listen to your father. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Everyone's going to be, what's I that know, about? It's, uh, it's, I can't yeah, tell it's you. something we just keep in the family here, but uh, <laughs> look, we're a couple days removed from UFC 300. And you know what, John, I, I just said I went that. back though. And I watched the show and I was like, you know what? There's a lot of things that we missed. Cause there was so much going on. Oh yeah. Tons of things. No I mean, like, it. let's be honest. We were like little kids in a candy store. We couldn't wait to talk about each fight individually. And then we ended up glossing over some of them because we were so excited talking about this, talking about that. It was like, you, you made a good point. Josh, we did a three hour podcast. But it still wasn't long enough. It still wasn't long enough. We had so much more to talk about. There there was things that we could have brought up and talked about that were actually really good jobs by people, special things that happened. But John, let me just, let's point out something. We didn't really, no. we kind of glossed over the fact that Alex starched him. We kind of glossed over it. Uh, uh, oh Jamal my God. Hill. And, it, and it's, it, it was the way he yes. did it. Cause you know, you take a look at the whole Max Holloway and Justin Gacy thing, but what Alex did, especially with Herb uh-huh. coming in time and him going, no, get away. You know me. what that reminds me? This is, this is only a couple seconds. There's only a couple seconds left here. And boom, boom. You know what that reminded yeah, me of? It was like unbelievable. Dave, can you pull What's up that? the clip of Jean-Claude Van Damme in Bloodsport when he gets the dust thrown in his eyes and he tells the ref, move out of the way because he protects the ref? It's one of those like things where he's like protecting the ref because he's, <laughs> he's blind. He can't see because the, the bad guy threw the dust in his eyes and, and he's protecting uh. the ref. It reminded me of that. Alex Bahia <laughs> is the Jean-Claude Van Damme. He's Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes is our Frank is our Dukes. guy, right? Man, do not ever talk. Oh, oh but Frank Dukes, man. <laughs> it was so it was so classic. What There's a, what are you doing to that poor man? Yeah, he throws it. Look at see, look at this is the perfect yeah. spot. Fast forward to the point. I'm Obviously, I can't play this for video listeners, but audio uh, listeners, John is Josh. But fast forward to where he protects the ref. It's so great. He like pushes. He kind of holds the ref. He kind of backs him up into the corner. I remember this this uh, movie like it was yesterday. But I started thinking about it, and I just noticed, like, when Alex did that, he's like, oh, no, that's not you. See right there? He just shoves oh, him yeah, out of the yeah, way, right protects there. He's, him. He's protecting oh, him. From... I like that. You stay over there because I'm about ready to kill yeah, this guy. This is so great. <laughs> it was so great. What a classic movie. Dude, he was freaking uh, shredded in this movie. No homo, well, though. No homo. It was together. just all straight. Like, he was just <laughs> shredded. Uh, but look, we glossed over the Alex Pajara knockout and, and obviously the pushing, of, not pushing, but the stopping of Herb coming in. No big deal. I got oh, this. Boom, boom. No big deal. You back. Get, get out of my way. He possesses way. so much power. I don't, I, what, what's funny is, you know, and you saw it because we had people, you know, on uh, like Twitter asking us questions about, you know, is it, what, you know, wasn't that wrong, you know, that Herb didn't give him time? No, it's not hmm. wrong. The fighter says, I don't want the time. And there's reasons why. And there's many times, there's all kinds of reasons that fouls occur. And when you look at a foul, it could be because it was accidental. It could be that it was purposeful in the fact that I'm hurt. And so I'll throw something that is illegal to try to get a break in time. There is the fact that you fouled me and the referee didn't do anything back to you. So I'm going to foul you back. And that, that happens. But it is the the fighter is the one that's in control of that, especially with a groin shot. And when Alex says, no, 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 I'm fine. You step back. Okay. Continue on. Because many times the fighters in a position where they go, I have my opponent right where I want them. I, you know, it could be that you know my opponent's tired. I don't want to give them yeah. rest. There's all kinds of reasons. And so, you know, Herb did the exact right thing. He backed off and several seconds later, it wasn't, <laughs> There was nothing for Herb to do. It was all over. I also want to say that I didn't mean to gloss over the fact that, look, I had said that this guy hasn't been getting the respect he deserves. Like, he's not getting the love. He's not. Look, you guys are taking this out of context. What I'm simply saying is that 
the UFC is looking for a star. And they haven't they like, have they they're, they're, they haven't been able to find one yet. Every promotion's they're, always yes, looking for a star. This is true. But look, Alex Pahed to me, is, I think he's like I was trying to say he he's a star. a star. He's a star in my eyes. He's a and I I am probably like I said, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I love Glover. I love him. I love his personality. I love that he doesn't talk a lot of trash. I love the fact that he backs up what he do- goes out there and says he's going to do. He, you know what he wants to do. He wants to stand and knock you out. That's his whole game plan. And the fact that people don't con- like chase after him trying to get takedowns and to make his judging of distance, it makes it difficult for people to get in. They, they respect his power. Or they should. All of these huh. things play a huge factor in the way he fights and the way he brings in the audience. I, I have said he doesn't get the respect. Like, let me just give you an example. Everyone that was listening, saying that, Oh, what are you talking about? He's a huge star. He's this, he's that. He is a huge star to the, to the mainstream fans. That is correct. But when you heard that this was the main event, nobody put any respect on his name. So that Uh, should answer exactly what your guys are complaining about right now. Everyone's like, what? This is not the fight. This is the main event. Put Gaethje and Max. That's what people were saying. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I've always been. He's a huge star. Yes, he is a huge star. I get that he is a huge star. But he's not on the Connor level. And he obviously was not apparently on the level of someone like a Justin and a Max. Because people were trying to replace his fight with Justin and Max. And I don't know if that has to do with the dance partner and John Manal Hill. But John Manal, Jamal Hill. Jamal, but it Jamal, comes Jamal. down to the fact that like. Regardless, we knew we were getting a stand-up battle with Jamal Hill and Alex, and it Absolutely. still wasn't good enough That's for why. the fans at home. Well, no, because they were no. What, what I'm saying that? is, when it came, when the fight was announced, I'm going oh, by before, when the fight before, was announced. Before the fight, people occurred. were complaining. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe it's the main event. I can't. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Well, hold on, Josh. <laughs> as simple as it gets, people are going to always complain. Complain. You're going to have people that, no matter what. They want to be negative about things. How many people did you hear say, this is not that good a fight? Oh, and I was like, what, what are you talking about? This, this thing is mm-hmm. stacked. You know, we, we talked about it as far as you take a look at the names that were on that in the preliminaries and the fights. You looked and you went, holy shit, they have gone above and beyond what you could expect. And yeah, UFC 300 is a big thing. But my God, it was just an unbelievably stacked card with every fight in a position where you could say, hey, that, that could be fight of the night. And it could be, you know, the, obviously, I think most people were picking mm-hmm. the, the Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. But, you know, I thought for the most part, just about every fighter showed up. Only a couple did it. Only a couple had fights that you looked at that was a bad night for them. You know, they didn't do the right thing. Holly would be one of them. You know, she just, you know, she went out there to to, to fight, but did not, no fight IQ, yeah. did not fight smart, did not, you know, and played right into what was Kayla's strength. And God bless Kayla for taking advantage of it. She looked fantastic, but Holly didn't have a good night. Calvin Cater didn't have a good night, but Aljamain Sterling, I've heard people complain about his fight and I go, he did exactly what yeah. he was supposed to do. What do you want him to do? He's fighting a guy that's a really good stand-up fighter. You want, so he's supposed to just stand on his feet and brawl with him. No, his job is to fight the fight that's going to get him a win tonight. And if Calvin Cater can't handle that, that's on Calvin Cater. It's not on Aljamain. Spencer. Absolutely agree. But ov- Absolutely agree. But ov- overall, most of the fights were just out. We got crucified, too, because you gave it a nine and a half, and I gave it a... I, gave I, know. It, I was like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. I know. I gave it the highest score I've any given card. any show ever. Okay, nine point five, and 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 I'll be honest. My whole thing was there was two reasons. Those, as far as like you know, Calvin Cater did not you know fight a smart fight, didn't really show up while Aljamain did. So that was a decision. Wasn't a really exciting mm-hmm. fight. You know, nothing against Aljamain. He, like I said, he did his job. I look at the Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage, and if you have a fight that has got odds of, you know, minus 2,400, yeah. it's telling you it's not a well-matched yep. fight. And so just about every other fight, you know, the Yuri versus Rackick fight, oh, great matchup. One of my favorite fights. You know, Bobby, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller, great matchup. Loved it. Cody against, you know, Figueredo, great matchup. Uh, those, if it was like that throughout, and it was, you know, you had the results that we had. That's a ten out of ten. But 
I mean, you're always going to have people complain. That's okay. I don't worry about it. Yeah, I, like I would agree with you. Yeah, on the I'm used to people yeah, on the um yeah exactly on the Holly Holm and the Kayla. Kayla was just so dominant. Holly didn't fight smart. I'm just going. Sorry, I'm going through the prelims yeah. again here. Uh, you That's know it. the Marina Rodriguez, even Jessica Andrade and Marina Rodriguez was a good fight. It was a very it was good, a good fight. fight. Uh, you yeah. know Jalen Turner and Moicano, great fight. I great it was fight. A great fight. Dude, Moicano, come on, he was out in that thing. Comes yeah. back. You know, I'm, just. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know fight. what fight wasn't good. Like, I look at Bobby Green and Jim Miller. It was a great first round, and then Bobby started to run away with it. Devison Figueredo yeah. and Cody, great first round, but then Devison obviously ran away with it after that. Like, you know, you just yep. had these moments where they were good fights and competitive in the first round, and then they the person that that's, was meant to win starts to take over. over. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. That's just, the way Just an all-around great night. But look, we yeah. even glossed over, let's be honest, we even glossed over the fact that we never brought up the fact that Max Holloway pointed to the ground. To the center. Yeah, no. I did. No. Yeah, I did. You just I went. Didn't. You just went. Yeah, he just pointed to the ground, and that was it. We didn't talk about how epic it was. Like, if someone does this, we didn't We didn't give it as much well, credit to it. I thought I, th I, thought I talked did. about that because he did it at 199. Yeah. No, you did. You, yeah, you, you did. brought that up. And I said, when he did that, at that moment at 199, I was like, that's the stupidest <laughs> goddamn thing I've ever seen, but I love it. You yeah. know? And, I, and I, it was exactly what went through my head. You know? And then yeah. he did it again, and I'm like, Again, that's the stupid because you've got the fight. Yeah. It's it's over. It's won. And you're giving someone the opportunity to steal that. You know, and that's but that's what makes Max Holloway who he I is. I love it. You know, I love everything about it's it. It's just phenomenal. He he's oh, got yeah, he just seems so um he seems so well, like not well, but he just seems so um, comfortable in his skin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, you no, know, I think it's the perfect thing that you just said. He is comfortable with who he is. He doesn't try to be anything. He doesn't try to be a shit talker. He just comes and says, hey, you know what, bro? We're going to scrap. Yeah. And he will throw down with anybody. And when he's on like he was on against Justin, he's a he's a fucking nightmare yeah i think he's gonna be I'm like i'm i'm really interested to see where he decides to go like i know that the Taporia fight is looming right there i mean he brought up that he wanted to fight uh conor mcgregor you know there was all this other stuff like that he talked about but i like we're gonna shake out the 145 pound division in a separate clip right dave so we're gonna do that so i can't right. touch too much on it right now because we got you. a lot of the fights to talk about this weekend that are coming up yeah. Start having, start having. I know he's gonna start throwing, throwing his pen through the you. through the TV at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's there's just a lot. There's a lot that Max could do right now. He's he's basically writing his own ticket, and I love he can write. I his love own ticket. when fighters bank on themselves and it works out and, and win. they win. And Thank he's you. I mean, he just yeah. Come on, I, it's amazing. If, if you're if you're Dana White right now, is if if there's two guys that you go, what do you want? It's Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje also. You know, I, I know Justin got, you know, he took a big chance in taking this fight. Yeah. He did. He, he was the number one contender for the title. And if he would end up losing to Max, which he did, that's gone. But he was willing to take mm -hmm. that chance. And and you look and you go, way to go, brother. You know, and, and I know, you know, obviously, I don't think Dana's going to give Justin, a, you know, a title fight right now. He's got to heal up, and obviously Dustin is getting uh, that shot. But if Dustin wins it, I can see him throwing Justin. I could. I could. I, I would see him fight. I think Armand would fight next. Trilogy fight? Well, absolutely. Armand's mm -hmm. right there. But you could see a trilogy fight between Dustin and Justin. It could happen. Where do you see Justin right now? In terms of, like, I know he's brought up the fact that he doesn't want to really continue on too much longer. He, I got one more title running left in me. Well... Was this your title run? I think you still have it. I th obviously, I think you are. I, I look. I think on a, he's no different than what you know when I was talking about Mac. On a given night, when Justin Gaethje is on, he's a nightmare yeah. for anybody. He has got power in his kicks that absolutely nullifies people in their ability to move well or starts to take over the fight mm -hmm. for him. He he's got he has certain patterns that you know. All fighters tend to have those. And you saw that Max actually used some of those patterns against him. You know, the ducking of the head down, you know, with the spinning back kick, 
And, you know, Max, I guess, came out and said that, you know, he actually, they, they practiced that thinking that he could duck into mm. a kick. So all those things you look and you go, are there things, you know, you got to learn from your losses that you're always going to learn a whole lot more from the loss than you are from the win. And so there's things that Justin can take away from this fight and build upon and become that much better. You know, and yeah, I don't think he's got multiple runs left, but he's got one absolutely, run left. absolutely, still. Well, look, uh, Trevor Whitman's getting crucified online. Why? Just that, like, the game plan really wasn't changed between rounds when people were listening to the cornering, and you know, oh, you're doing okay. great. You know, um, you know, like, just stay calm, stay composed. Like, I mean, you got to know you're down three, four rounds. Yeah, I, but. Again, and this is I I don't know. I, I have been in the in with the cage with Justin and Trevor. I've uh I've seen them interact, but he knows his fighter better than anyone. And he knows that if his fighter needs to be told, hey, you know what? You're 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 screwing up here. I need you to do this. You're not doing this, or hey, doing good. This is what I want you to do. And he just keeps on trying to uplift and cheerlead a little bit and and bring that there. You see it. How many times have you seen fighters that start to fold under getting yelled at by coaches? Yeah. You've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen them just start to just implode off of it. Like, Oh my God, I'm not doing well. And then I've seen fighters that, you know what? They get yelled at and that, that motivates them. They go, everybody's different. Everyone's got their things. Some, some need to be, you know, patted on the ass and some need to be kicked in the ass. It's just different. I think each opportunity, not each opportunity, each scenario deserves something different. You can't always be the same. And I've said this, I think a hundred times to people like there was a, something I was doing when I was younger is that when I would coach kids, I was always on like an 11. And then I realized <laughs> I that, that like, then the kids start wondering like, okay, well, what does a 12 and a 13 look like? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, you, yeah. you can't, you can't operate on that, that level all the time. You've got to be at a be, basically try to maintain like a three or a four. And when you need to get into yeah. them, get yourself, get yeah, get eight. yourself up to an eight or a nine, you know? And then, like, if you, and then they got to know the difference between the two things because then they don't know when you're, when they're in trouble. They don't know when they're doing good. With, it's all the same. That just comes with maturity, though, as for you yeah. as a coach, too. Coaching is something that it's not easy, you know? In fact, it can be some of the most frustrating times of your life when you're trying to coach someone and, you know exactly what they need to do, but they're not implementing it. They're not listening. They're doing their own thing. And you go, what are you going to do? You know, all you can do is sit there and, and yeah, trip. you know, I, I, I make jokes about, you know, how I got the nickname, the punk. Cause I, I did a lot of goofy things in the gym in terms of how to get out of submissions and things like that. Uh, you know, guys give me in triangles. I'm like, I'm not tapping you. I stick my finger in their ass, you know, just so I can get out like little things like that. And then I'd fish hook them after that with the same finger. You know, like those are reasons why like people would call me the punk. But the biggest reason Javier used to tell me this, the biggest reason that we would call you the punk is because I was so passionate about how hard guys should be working. Like you guys have an opportunity to live the best life. You know, you guys get to come to the gym every day, train every day, fucking six hours a day training, eat the, you know, eat, eat healthy, take care of your body, do all these things. You're living the fucking dream traveling. So most of us traveling the world, going wherever basically paid for. Nice hotels, On somebody else's yeah, dime. five star hotels, yeah. fucking great food, introducing yourself to new cultures, all of those things. And I used yeah. to be so hard <clears throat> on all of them, on everyone. It didn't matter. Kelly Delante, Char uh, uh, Charles Taylor. It didn't matter. I would yell sometimes at John Fitch, even though he was a hard worker. It could be Mike Swick, you fucking lazy. Not like there would be, I'd be say stuff to people, you know, because at the time I was the only one in the UFC at the time. But then as they got in the UFC and then I went to strike force because they got rid of the weight class at 155 pounds, like then going into strike force and this and all this other stuff, I would still get on them. They're like, man, what the fuck is this guy's problem? And I was like, why are you guys not coming to training? Why? Like, why the fuck was I doing the bike by myself last night? I need a night off. We all need nights off. We don't take, you know, I just, I was that guy always going, always going a hundred miles an hour. Just like, Hey, you guys are better than this. And I always have something to say because we always had team meetings after practice. And I always like, Hey man, like, why the fuck are you sitting out, you know, two rounds after you just did one round? What's the problem? What, what can't you do? Like, get your ass in here. Like, last time I checked fights were three rounds and five rounds. 
you're not even ready to do fucking three. Like, you know, and like, you're not even in the big show. Yeah, like, I would. See, but that's not being a punk. That's needed. Yeah, but I think, I think, because I, I would, I would do that to Mike Kyle. I'd do it to Paul Buonatello. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't fucking uh, discriminate against weight. I didn't give a shit. Like, I was. <laughs> That's because that's all because you knew you could yeah, outrun. I mean, him. like, there's there's a lot. Like, yeah, that's just true, by the way. But then I didn't have to outrun because I would literally get in there and spar with them too. I didn't care. Paul Bonatello sparred with Mike Kyle sparred with. Shit, I sparred with uh, Christian Wellish. I actually knocked him out like cold, face down, ass up. And Javier was yeah. not. He was. He's like, no, no. Hey, I thought he was me mad at me. He wasn't mad at me because he he did it. A, he was weight bullying me, and he got what he deserved. But I like Christian; he's a nice it's, guy. It's it's tough to get mad at someone when they're the lightweight and they knock out. Yeah, the yeah, and he and he was a ranked heavyweight at the time in the UFC. So oh, I remember like, he was in the UFC. Uh, but no, it just was really like um, I, I got that reputation by being that person. So it was it was a it was a weird a weird a weird thing. But though the punk because the, you sell for the passion, you sell it with the passion. Those are the things you do. Anyways, yeah. but. All right, look, that's a great recap on Selma the Passion. Selma the Passion, yes. Josh. You you and I talked about a story uh, that was uh, Selma yes. the Passion over the last few days here. And uh, you asked me to put something together. So do you want to yeah, go Yeah, there? let's go there. Let's go right into it. Look, so uh, a longtime friend of mine who I've, we've talked about on this podcast several times. And as of recently, because he's a fucking hero, not only was a fucking hammer and a hero, but he's a savage, man. This guy <laughs> saves his parents, you know, but Mark Coleman. Mark yeah. Coleman was on Aaron Hawani and he, John, he's laid little, into little. your ass. He fucking, bro, he was taking a piece of it. He was mad. He was mad at you for, for Pete Williams grabbing the fence and, you know, and, and basically, yeah. you know, in his eyes, cheating. But yeah. let's talk about the rules in the <laughs> back then. Let's talk about it. First off, let me say this before we start, if we're going to do this. Thank, thank you, Dave. Oh, we're doing it. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. Okay. First thing I want to say is, I love Mark Cole. He's an awesome guy. Uh, Mark is a phenomenal person. He's had he's had his issues, and he's fought his way through those issues just like he fought his way in the cage. He is a uh, a guy that I have the utmost respect for. I've had a lot of instances with him as far as you know things where you know I, th I thought we were friends, but <laughs> it's. I think we are. It's a matter of, you know, sometimes memory, you know, it, it changes based upon you see something so often and it becomes normal that you associate that that is the norm with what you are now looking at. And I, I got cheated. I got screwed. Okay. Back what Mark was complaining about, some of what he was complaining about, I'm going to tell you is was true. And I, and I agree with him. So he wasn't wrong about everything. The Pete Williams fight that he was upset with, I can go over and explain that and make it to where people, I think, would understand. But, you know, first off, would I ever have a conspiracy against Mark? No, I love Mark. Mark was one of my favorites. I really like Mark. Mark was coming off of a knee injury going into that fight. He'd been gone for a little while, too. Um, but, you know, back then, Josh, the rules changed almost every show. Almost every show. And it was Randy Couture used to just get heated about, God damn it, you changed that rule too? You know, because I was, I've been practicing for this and now you're saying I can't do it. And, and I, you look and you go, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, I apologize. That's, that's just the way it is with, and, and part of it was my fault. I'm trying to do things to make the sport better in my, in, you know, my eyes and other people's eyes that I'm talking with and trying to get it to be uh, acceptable. And then I have to go through people that, for the most part, never been in a fight in their life, you know, and they own the company. And so they're the ones that get to make the decisions on what rule they're going to accept and what rules they're not. So what do you want to know? And I'll explain the whole thing to you. All right. So. Oh, now, Dave, you're going to come in on me. On in. You think this this is your opportunity to get yeah. at me? <laughs> okay, so I'll just be transparent a couple of things, right? So I put a club together, and you're going to be blind to this. I know you've probably seen it. Well, you might have seen the interviews. People might have told you, but you're going to kind of be blind. So the fight is in here. The fight's kind of like um, overlaid on the interview. Um, it might get as demonetized, so I'm sorry, Josh. Uh, and it may, um, you know, oh. and, and you might not like the kind of approach on this because so, you've not, I don't know if you've seen the interview. So 
We're just going to go into it, John. If you want me to pull out and post edit, I can. Josh will probably fight you on that. But <laughs> I'm going to play you the interview with the, with the fight playing in the bottom corner. Wherever you want to pause it and make a comment, tell me. I'll pause it. And sure. then, uh, and then you know, you can make your comments. All right. Okay. So uh, let me sure. let me hit play on here. And, and I'm going to be turning going. this way to see it. You go back and watch that, you know. You go back and watch that fight. I got, I don't want to complain, but it's just a fact. Big John McCarthy, it was conspiracy to get rid of the hammer. They did, they did not want the hammer there. And Big John, he allowed Pete Williams to grab onto that fucking cage for literally minutes. I'm trying to take him down for literally, I didn't know this until I watched the film. I just thought this son of a bitch was that hard to take down. And, and I, I burned all my gas trying to take him down. Big John didn't say one word to him. And then later on during that fight, I'm up against the cage. I touch the fucking cage. And Big John yells at me, let go of the cage. Let go of the cage or I'm going to penalize you. Okay, you stop know, right I didn't there. know this. Okay. So let's go over the cage and, and everything. <laughs> the rules. I love it, man. Well, His voice does well, everything it, to me. It's great. I know. I love him. Dude, and, and this is, he's you know, great guy. When, when you got someone that you truly yeah, care about, dude. you know, and he's so passionate about it, and I don't blame him. But l let's be honest about how things came about. There, if you go back to, there was the ultimate ultimate. It was, it was in between UFC 7 and UFC 8. Okay. And there was a fight on that between Marcos Huas and Oleg Tartarov. And during that fight, uh, Marcos takes Oleg down up against the cage. And Oleg reaches up and grabs the cage and pulls himself to a standing position. And during it, I'm like, man, that's just wrong. You shouldn't be able to use the cage in that way. But all right, it goes on to, and it goes on to, you know, a couple of days after the show and I call Bob Meyerowitz, who is the owner of the UFC. He was the owner of Semaphore Entertainment Group who owned the UFC. And I said, Bob, you, this should, we should not allow the fighters to grab the cage. They can't use the cage as a tool. I mean, you can press somebody up against it, but when you're grabbing it to bring yourself to a standing position, that it shouldn't be like, he goes, what are you talking about? That was great. That was one of the best moments of that fight. I love that. No, we're not, we're not touching that. That stays. I said, okay, all right. So that a couple more fights go on. And then, you know, I have Mark Coleman who fights, and, and I'll bring this up later as far as UFC 10. And he fights against Gary Goodrich, and he said something about that, or Modi Hornstein, Gary Goodrich, and then Don Fry. And he's absolutely right as far as uh, what he says in there, and I'll, I'll, we'll get back to that. But when it comes to UFC 11, Jerry Bolander is going to fight a guy named Fabio Gurgel. Fabio Gurgel is a multi-time jiu-jitsu world champion uh, from the Mundials. And he's just a phenomenal jiu-jitsu practitioner. But Jerry is in the tournament against him, and it's the first uh, round of the tournament. And Jerry gets the takedown, and he gets him against the cage, but he's holding the cage. Just, he's actually the wire is stretching and it's, you know, opening gaps in it. He's holding it. So as, as you know, Fabio's trying to do sweeps, he's holding onto that cage. So you can't sweep him over. And it's just like, come on, man, this is just wrong. So that fight happens. And I go back to Bob Myers and I said, Bob, you can't have someone. I said, all of that skill that Fabio Gurgel had, and he would have gotten those sweeps, all of that is taken away by someone who is now mangling your cage, holding on to it. That's not fighting. That's, you know, he's using it as a tool. It's bad. And he looks at that and says, yeah, I didn't like that. All right. If someone is using the cage to hold their person onto the ground or hold them against the cage, that's, that's not allowed. He goes, but they're allowed to keep themselves from getting taken down okay so now that's the rules going to ufc 12 you have takahashi from japan facing off against valise ishmael right and in that fight you watch takahashi he's holding the cage and valise ishmael is doing everything he can to try to get the fight to the ground can't do it he hates me afterwards because guy was holding the cage he's allowed to okay i can't sit there and foul someone or do something when they're doing something that's not a foul 
So this fight, when you take a look at it, this is under close the same rule set as far as the cage in that every time you see Mark Coleman trying to take Pete Williams down and Pete is holding on to the cage and he did no doubt about it, but that was legal. What wasn't legal was when Mark was tired and holding Pete up against the cage and holding the cage to keep him there. That's not legal. So I'm telling him, let go of the cage. And that's what he's talking about here. But, you know, I'm going to be honest. You know, it's the same as, you know, we've talked how many times. Josh, how many fighters know the rules? <laughs> and so, it, you know, and back then, I don't blame him for not knowing those rules and not remembering them or anything like that and associating the rules of today with the rules back then. That was UFC. He said 14. That wasn't 14. That was UFC 17. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, and, and, you know, truthfully, UFC 14, after UFC 14, I did a big rule change for the cable companies, a guy named Leo Hendry, who was in charge of Time Warner Cable, trying to get back into the pay-per-view and, you know, one of the guys that I knew the new rules that I was putting in was, was going to affect, I was taking away headbutts for one. And Mark Coleman was great the with father headbutts. Of headbutts. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. And I knew that was going to affect his, his style of fighting and stuff. And I'm like, man, I, you know, then I was going to Jeff Blatt and I said, man, I, you know, I, I'm just telling you the new rules that we're, I'm, I've got here. I go, they're truly going to affect one guy in a negative fashion. That's Mark Coleman. And I was concerned about it because it was like, I, I don't want to hurt his career. And, you know, they decided, no, they were going to do that. But the, the fence grabbing in that was, that was the rule back then. You could hold onto the fence to keep yourself up. You could not hold the cage to keep your opponent locked up in a, in a position or up against the cage. So that he's absolutely right. You can go back and watch that fight. And I'm sure it's going to, you know, show that, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling him, you know, hey, got to let go of it or I'm going to foul you because I'm trying not to foul him, you know, and it's, uh, he's right about, you know, it is that way, but you, you got to go back to that rule set. And back then that's the way it was. We're just making shit up as we go, huh? In the early days, <laughs> well, you know, and, and honestly it was, yeah. you know, you go back and you look and like I said, we were changing things all the time. You know, it, he, he brought up the whole fact of with the shoes, at that moment, UFC 17, we had said you could you were allowed to kick someone to the face with shoes. It got to the point several shows later, I want to say it was UFC 24, I think we switched the rule. And like in UFC 26 or so, uh, Alex Andrade, if you remember him from the Lion's Den, was fighting Omri Batesh. And it. what's that? Let's play it. Play what? Oh, your thing. The, the, <laughs> okay. But in, in in that, you know, I actually DQ'd Alex out of the fight for kicking Omri uh, to the head because they put it. We had put in the rule. Okay, no kicking with uh, shoes. You want to wear shoes? You can't kick to the head. Go ahead. Let's hear the rest of this. Go ahead. During the fight, but after the fight, people pointed it out to me. People watch this fight in detail. And yeah, yeah. every my my good friend Mike Davis, the the undercover cop, it, more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Big John pulled me off Pete Williams, too, in this fight. Uh, why? Stop it right there. You know what I mean? Why? Stop it right there. I did pull him off in the fight one time. <clears throat> he was on, you know, and, and Mark was a guy who slowed down mm -hmm. in the fights as the fights were going down. And you, you would sit there and you try to give him time to do these things. But you got to figure back then, a main event, this, I, this was the main event but it wasn't a championship fight. So back then it would have been a 12 minute round with two, three minute overtimes to try to get a finish mm -hmm. in the fight. If it, if it ended up where there was no finish in the fight, then it would go to a judge's decision. But when you look at, you know, the time that I let him be on the ground, he was on the ground and I'm, I, I haven't seen it, but I would tell you, you know, six minutes mm -hmm. or so before I stood him up. And I stood him up one time in the fight. I did. I remember it. You know, and it's uh, it's one of those. Well, I also stood him up when it was the end of the round. Conspiracy so theories. Like twice. <laughs> it was well, you know, it's, you know, cons the conspiracy part. It's like 
I honestly, I, you know, I, I think Mark, you know, can, is, he's, he's always going to remember things and I'm sure he had dealings, but in my personal opinion at the time, I would have told you Semaphore wanted him. You know, he was one of their stars. He was a guy, you know, to sit there and say that they wanted to get rid of Mark the Hammer Coleman. I didn't see that. Not at all, you know, and, and they never, you know, to sit there and say that, you know, I, I, I purposely, you know, tried to, you know, stay away from, you know, I always said, you know what, Mark Coleman doesn't need me to win a fight. Randy Couture doesn't need me to win a fight. Chuck, they're going to figure out their own way of doing it. Yeah, but like, look, anytime you're coming off a loss, you have these things and images in your mind on how things actually went down. When in reality, when you watch sure. it back on TV, and then he's watched it back on TV, but he also is forgetting that he didn't know the rules. So that makes it even more difficult yeah. to watch it. And especially when. Yeah, especially soon then, because right away you're going, oh, look at right mm -hmm. there, you know. And then when you look back and then people are watching it going, oh, how come you can't grab the, how come he was allowed to grab the fence? How come you couldn't grab the fence? He could grab yeah, the fence, but you could. The rules have changed it's so the much situation. since then. Oh, I mean, and, and, and they're going to continue to keep changing. They're going to keep adding more rules. And they're going to some, sometimes take some rules away. Like what? The yeah. 6 to 12 is gone now. Or sorry, 12 to 6 is gone now, right? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. So that's it's probably going to be gone here soon. And, uh, you know, and they're going to have a couple other things that they're going to try to make some changes to. Mark Coleman is a good dude. There's nothing we can say. He's a great yeah, dude. Nothing we can say about I just love how passionate he is about this. And uh, just the raspy voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me go. You can let it go on. Let's see. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But let him hold in that cage. I'm 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 irritated. I'm really irritated. It's never been addressed. It's never been addressed. Why do you think they wanted you out? And were was kicking to the head actually legal that fight? That I'm point, not sure. What is that? UFC 13. Yeah. Well, at least he Off admits I'm not sure 14, if kicking to the 14? head. Was legal. So kicking to the head might have been illegal with the shoes on. I'm not sure. Yeah, that was. And, and why? Did Big John McCarthy let this guy hold on to the cage? I pulled him off the cage. He's holding himself up with the cage. He's right. Where is the fucking penalty? Right. But why do you think they wanted you out? You said there was a conspiracy. Uh, you know, wrestling, man. Wrestling. They wanted. They didn't like the style? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they did. And you think he was in on that? I don't know. I love that. that would be the promoters. That would be I, SCG I era, right? So not the Zufa no, era. Not Zufa. That's uh, you know Bob Meyerowitz. I don't know who. I, I, I don't know. You I'm get that still, feeling that they I were. I don't know who was in on it. I just know Big John McCarthy owes yeah. me an apology. Still, all these years. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Mark. Some fucking fight. <laughs> I'm getting mad right now. I don't think about it ever. I'm getting mad right I now. I don't think about it ever. I love that. I about died that fucking night with kicking the head. It would have never happened. It wouldn't have had to happen if this guy wouldn't have let him hold on the cage. And that's that's almost 30 years ago now. Yeah. Have you ever talked to John about this? No. Have you seen him? Yeah. And, and <laughs> That's the friends, truth. Friends, too. friends, but it's because I haven't brought up this subject. Have you I mean, we did, we did an interview with him, if you recall. Stop it real quick. When Fedor fought, we did an interview with yeah. Mark. Remember he got, he got this? We did an interview with Mark. It's like, Mark, why didn't you say? Yeah. If, if this is bothering you, brother... Please. He said he was getting angry right Please, now. I, would, I wonder if he's going to jump up and get Ariel. Just, ah, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your ass over uh, here. I need someone to smash. Buddy. <laughs> uh, Dave, do you want to let that go or do you want me to bring up something else that he talked about? So I have the whole the whole point, the whole part of where he's talking. So I, I say let's play okay. it. Okay, and play, it. Pause it. Me play it. And then keep in, keep in your head whatever you want to say. And we'll, we'll if it doesn't come up, we'll address it. Let's get it all out tonight. Get it, get it all out. Or you'd rather not. Today, I yeah, right now. Today. Why do you think you're talking about it now? Why, why do you think it's making you so mad? It came right? out. I mean, it just came we're out. Yeah. Talking about whatever. It I know, I know. It's out. just it, it feels I'm, like I'm, it just uh, happened yesterday, but based I'm, on how uh, upset you are. Instinctual. I mean, just a uh, spur of the moment guy. You know what I mean, so, but it, I, you know, hate. No, why don't hate you? Why don't you? Job. Why don't you address it with him? So maybe you can clear I it up. I think he knows. I mean, other people have addressed it. I think he knows. I don't think he wants to talk about it. <laughs> Um, I'd like to see you go watch the fight and give me your opinion. Yeah, well, now I, I knowing this, your I, I've seen the fight, of course. And I believe go watch it again. You're yeah, well, now we're on the cage. Yes, but okay. doesn't know the rules. Where was the warning? And I watch it again. And why did I get warned? Like, I just barely touched the fucking cage and I got the warning right away. No, he was holding on to the cage. Nothing. <laughs> I love him. So, and it's probably more than that. If I go watch the fight, I haven't watched the damn fight forever. Uh, ever. Of course, of course. If I go watch it again, I'll probably get more and more angry because I think there was some, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't think Big John was in love with me at that time. Really? Well, wow. he, he got that wrong, too. 
that's funny because you know the fact that he says that i look and i go okay and you know and I've, we, i we i sent you some pictures yeah. that we have and stuff <laughs> it's like mark you were one of my Absolutely. favorites man yeah. how do you not like so, the hammer man yeah. come on how do you not like the hammer exactly dude he He's was great stuff. Dude, we, had, a, we butted heads in the very first uh, fight. How so? Modi Hornstein. He, he he yanked me off very, very hard. You know okay, what I mean? Well, stop there's it. no reason to yank me off that hard, especially when I'm He's getting off. And right. then... Absolutely right. And it was something that, again, semaphore. If you go back and you watch uh, Tank Abbott against um, God, John Matua, he knocks John Matua out and John you know, starts to seize. And I yanked, you know, tank off, you know, and just grabbed him, turned him, you know, and yanked him up. And they loved it. And they said, that's the way we want you to stop all the fights. Right. If you go back and you would listen to, you know, when I say, let's get it on here. If, if you take, you know, when I say, let's get it on, you know, they wanted me, you know, you know, loud and bold and everything. Take a look at how I would say it at the end of my career. Hey, let's get it, let's get it on. You know, I, I tried to get away from it at a certain point and people started complaining. No, 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 no. You got to say that, right? All right. So I'll say it, you know, low. But, you know, I used to scream it out back then and everything. And it, it was, this was a time you got to figure, I didn't have anybody to teach me. Mm -hmm. There was, I was, I was in the boxing world, I was hated, <laughs> you know? And so it was, uh, I couldn't learn from it. So I had to, I had to figure things out on my own. And one of the things I figured out was, you know, like he's saying, they wanted me to, you know, get these guys in and, you know, be physical. And you got to figure somewhere around UFC 10, that's when Mark came in for his first one. I probably was 285 pounds, you know, got up somewhere around 310 at the highest that, you know, when I was refing. And you look and you go, and I, I realized, and it was off of several fights and it was, UFC 10 and 11. And that's when I started to stop it is because I realized I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt one of these guys based upon, I am too heavy and too big. And uh, they don't, they don't see, it's not like they can you know stop me. They're not seeing me coming. They don't know when I'm doing something. And so he was absolutely right. When he sits there and he says, you know, I was rough with him in <laughs> yeah, Mark Coleman's it's way bigger than Mark. You. <laughs> and that's called angles too. <laughs> but uh, you know, he, uh, he talked about that and the Gary Goodrich fight. Then he complained about the Don Fry fight, saying that, you know, I stood him up and then made him start on the feet. The reason I, I stood Don up in that fight was Mark was killing him. And I took him to the doctor, hoping the doctor was going to stop the fight. The doctor says, no, he can go. Well, the only thing I could do at that time, the rules were you put them back to their corners and have them come back. I could not put him back on the mat so when he looks and he says you know he, you know, he stood me up you know and he made me start from a standing position he's right but it's actually because i was i was trying to get the fight over i was trying to bring him to the doctor to say that have the doctor say hey because don was beat to death and the doctor at least yeah let him go a little bit longer i'm like ah oh, fuck you know but he's you know he's right that i did that but again that was the rules back mm -hmm. then he didn't he's not understanding it's not the same as i can put you back in the position which later on, based on Genki Sudo against Dwayne Ludwig, that's when we got the rule changed for that. Yeah. So I can always tell you where the rules came in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's not hard for me to remember, but you know, I understand where he the way he looks. Yeah, the frustration level though is not knowing the rules also, too. And like fighters these days, they still don't know the rules. And I've said it I don't know how many times on this show, and I've continued to say it in interviews as well, is that Fighters need to educate themselves in knowing what the rules are so then they know how to benefit from the rules as well as take advantage of the rules. Uh, you know, in, in the, well, it's a live situation going on. So, I mean, there's so many years have passed. I mean, <laughs> the sport has changed Look, so uh, much. And, you know, the, I want, I want, I'm going to put this out here, there now. You know, Mark, like I said, I love you. I have absolutely nothing but love for you. I think you've been a phenomenal person. You're a loyal person. You have done great things. I love what you did in, in helping your mom and dad out of a horrible situation. If you ever want to come on the show and yell at me, come on, yeah. on, man. I'll let you yell at me the whole time. You can be mad at me, but I didn't cheat you. And it wasn't that I had a conspiracy against you. I loved you, dude. I thought you were fantastic. And uh, you know, I'm sorry you're, you're, you're remembering it the way you are, but 
the rule back then was he could grab the cage. <laughs> I didn't like it either. Uh, uh, and and the second fight was Big Daddy Gary Gilrich. I <laughs> I put the boots in on him. I'm about to ready to go finish a rear naked choke. Big Daddy tapped out. Well, Big John came over and gives me a forearm to the chest <laughs> to knock me off of Big Daddy before I choke him out. Well, big fucking deal. I wasn't smashing him like He's I right. could have been. Right. He's so right. He knocks me clean back well, we, and damn near blew my fucking knee out. We, we had a very similar situation with Brian Johnson. Well, Brian Johnson said at, at UFC 3, John, like, what right? The, what UFC is this? 3, that you came no. in and took him off, and you hit his nose that with was, your That was UFC 11. 11. Oh. UFC 11 was one after this. This thing. And that's when I, that's when I said, hey, I, I, I got to stop that. I can't do yeah. that. I'm going to hurt somebody. Because you came in, and he was I mean, fighting Ken Shamrock I heard... at the time, right? No, no. He was fighting a guy named Reza gotcha. Nasri. And uh, he he obliterated Reza Nasri, and he, he actually pushed Reza's nose over into his damn eye socket. <sighs> it was, he, he broke his nose to probably one of the best breaks I've ever man, seen. Man, something I'd like to do but, to podcast man. Dave's nose. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. Uh, Is that it, or? You know, and then... And then the Dom Fry fight, well, why the hell did he pull me off? Why did he pull me off that guy at 11 minutes into the fight and restart the fight on our feet? Mm. See, there you go. I was on top of him, beating the hell out of him. Oh, he was beating the hell out of him. <laughs> took him over, cleaned his face off, cleaned him up, gave him a break, and they restart the fight on the feet. It don't make any sense, does it? Or does it? No, no. It don't make any sense. Thank you, Ariel. No, no. I need to. I need, I need, I need I, planning of this. You, you yeah. just got it out of me, Ariel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. I understand. And you get the shit out of me. I, 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 I'd love to see you maybe talk to him about this so that you can move on. And uh, Ariel just looks very uncomfortable. He's like, is he? He does. Look, look he at really Ariel. Does. Doesn't want to move. He's not joking. Yeah, he's, got, he's got his hand, his arms like, and like, wow, he's mad. Dave, what happened there? You lost your microphone. <laughs> no, I have to use it to give you guys. Audio. I was like, what's going on? Yeah, Why you keep dipping it. your head down there? No, because, yeah, I was using, don't worry, post-edit will not know the difference. Oh, I, I thought, yeah. yeah but, Go ahead. You know, what's funny, well, what's ahead. actually funny about this is, you know, after that fight, yeah, you know, I've worked out with Mark, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, at least he wasn't mad back then. <laughs> you know, we've had, into, you know, he, he, we were at a party one time, and, and this was a time that Mark had been drinking, and, <laughs> you know, he got mad at people, and he was, he was going crazy, and, and I picked him up carried him off and you know, luckily he was drunk and so the only reason i could do it but uh you know i've had all kinds of things with him. and now you know with this attitude towards how i screwed him in this fight it's like wow i'm glad he didn't remember that shit back then he's so funny though i've been out with him at clubs he's and a good about person. and like he does yeah. get he's very uh he wears his heart on his sleeve man he's someone who's very yes, emotional he but he's a got a huge huge heart huge heart so yeah, great he person uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to well, resort it out. I reached out to him actually because I have his number. So I reached out to him this morning to see if we can get him on tonight. But maybe it was short notice or whatever. But I don't know how often he checks his phone either. So hopefully we can get him on. I'd love to have him on. I love Mark, man. Great guy. Uh, and uh, lo I'd love to have him on too. He can yell at me all he wants. <laughs> all right. Hey, we're going to get into uh, P PFL is this weekend. There is no UFC this weekend. We're going to get a PFL uh, three. I think I it's think the beginning of the regular break. season. We've got the welterweights that are happening. Is this the welterweights and who else? Featherweights? Oh, this is uh, featherweights. Yeah, featherweights. featherweights. Yeah. Welterweights and featherweights. Some good fights up. on this card, though. There's the, the, there are there to be talked about. Ah, uh, go ahead, John. What you got? Andre Korshkov versus Magomed Umalat. Umalat. Umalatov. Umalatov. He look. This is a great fight. Look, uh, Andre Korshkov is a beast. Umalatov is a beast. This is going to be one of those. You know, I I I do believe that. Koreshkov has had the harder schedule of fights. He's fought the better competition overall. But uh, Umlatov is a guy that's coming up, and this is a matter of just who uh, who establishes themselves. You know, they both have the kickboxing, both have good wrestling. Uh, Koreshkov is a guy who he's got beautiful spinning attacks. He sets them up really well, super fast with him. He's got power in his hands, but so does Umlatov as far as, you know, he's got power in his hands. I think this is a phenomenal 
main event in the welterweight division. Yeah, I, I've looked at this card. I thought this card has some good fights in here that are actually could be kind of surprisingly fun. You know, but I'm going to continue really to speak ones. on this. Do not be surprised when we end up next year with champ versus champ that it's all Bellator versus Bellator guys. You know, and I'm getting into this. Like, look, there's some, some of the Bellator guys lost last week, and I'm not here to make excuses for them. I'm simply saying, like, you guys need to ship up or shape out. That's our whatever that saying is, you know, like that's how it goes. Shape up or yeah, ship, ship out. Ship up or ship out. <laughs> like you guys got to stay on track. This is this is your opportunity to head over into this uh, tournament format. Million dollars. Yeah, and make million your million dollars. dollars. And I, I know some of you guys are uh, have some pretty damn good contracts, and some people uh, that had really good contracts decided to stay in Bellator and just fight, you know, two three times a year if you could, or just two times a year if you were able to. But Korshkov over there. This is going to be a great main event. Should be a banger in terms of on the feet. We're going to see them. I think the wrestling will probably cancel themselves out. I think Omotov has a little bit better wrestling, but I think Korshkov has a little bit better stand-up. And yep. then I look I at uh, Brandon Lockname versus uh, Pedro Cavallo. John, I, look, I continue to always kind of count Pedro out. Yeah. And standing next to Pedro, he doesn't seem like a big guy. And he's not a big guy. But but Brendan, Brendan Lockton, I have a picture next to him too. And this dude's bigger than me. I know I'm 50 years old, but still, <laughs> this guy's got, he's built, he's got the neck. He's, he is a pretty damn big featherweight. And I, yeah. I'm asking him, how do you make the weight? I think on the feet, look, the thing though is that with Brendan Lockton, right? He's good on the feet. He's good at takedown defense, but his grappling is not as good as Pedro's. Pedro's grappling is a little bit no. better, but. Pedro, yes, I think, is going to have a very hard time getting him down. Now, the way Pedro normally wins fights is how, John? He grinds. He, he's somebody he that people, loses the first it. round, and then in the second and the third, he starts building but momentum. There's pressure. There's pressure. There's a, and the momentum just kind of comes. Continuous pressure, he doesn't stop. Yeah, and he, yep. he waits for you to kind of like fold a, a little bit. Brandon Lockdown's not going to yeah. fold. He's been there. He's done that. He knows what he can do. Uh, you know, I know he's coming off not a great season last season. But I think he's going to be ready for the, for this one. I think sometimes the time away after you were uh, he won it yep. the year before, correct? Yeah. So yep. after winning it, it, like it takes you deep into the season. You have three four months off. You've been training for all these fights. It's a lot of fights to have in like a nine month period. And so I think he'll be refreshed and ready to go for this fight. Pedro's going to be a good fight for him. But I think look on the feet, it's going to be Brendan Lockney, and on the on the ground, if it does get there, will be Pedro. So it's going to be good for make for a good fight. Next fight, Absolutely. John. Logan Storley taking on Shamil Musayev. Josh, this is a great it fight. It is. This is a great fight. I mean. This is as good as it gets as far as Logan Storley is a stud wrestler. So is Musayev. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, Musayev is undefeated. Logan's got two losses. Same guy. Yaroslav yeah. Amazov, you know, other than that, he's been able to utilize his wrestling to beat some very high profile, great fighters. Uh, this is really going to be who is better on the feet, in my yeah. opinion, in using their stand up to get to the wrestling at times. But I think it's going to end up being more of a stand up battle. And uh, we're going to see who's. Yeah, better. I think what's going to happen is Shamil's going to try to figure out if, look, if I can just stuff Logan's takedowns and try to keep this thing on the feet. I think that he may have a little bit of an advantage on the feet, but Logan, honestly, on the time off and the time away, has been working a lot more on his stand-up. They've been doing a great yeah. job over at Kill Cliff with him, with Henry Hooft and all the guys that are there. And I think really he's kind of coming into it. Robbie Lawler now has stepped away and become kind of Logan's head coach, you know, and, and dictating where he goes, how much time he spends on the mitts, basically taking him under his wing going, hey, let's make sure we're working on this and getting you ready for this fight. I think there's going to be some good stuff coming out of this fight, man. I think the, the wrestling is going to yeah. nullify each other. We may see two ferrets getting after it yep. on the ground, but I think we're going to have a at stand times, banger. Yeah, I think you're going to have some great scrambles mm -hmm. at times that are going to end up with two people back on their feet, and they're going to end up banging. I could almost see almost a repeat of how um, Yaroslav Amosov and Logan fought the first fight. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. But except Logan now has absolutely. a lot better uh, striking than he did in that fight. <laughs> yeah, way better. Uh, Gabriel Braga versus right. Justin Gonzalez. John, this is another banger Locking of a fight. Me. I think it's going to be a great fight. It is. I think uh, really it's a question of where's Gabriel Braga's mind at? Where is his heart at? Where is he, you know, is he in a good mental space? 
based upon, you know, he, look, he had his dad murdered. And uh, that's going to be a hard thing for uh, anyone to deal with. Uh, he's taken on a stud in Justin Gonzalez. Justin Gonzalez has got a high output, good wrestling. He will stand with anybody. Um, this is a, a really tough, tough fight for both of them. I actually give Justin Gonzalez the uh, edge in this fight. Uh, I'm giving him the edge because I was in Riyadh and Gabriel Braga was a, a disaster that week. And he was fine okay. when uh, talking with him, talking with the coaches, talking with people around uh, Bellator and PFL. He was fine all through his camp. You know, he was able to get to camp. But when he showed up and he was in another country and his, and his dad, dad wasn't there, there yeah. it just he just couldn't get through it. And and I'm, yeah. and I'm not going to say anything because i i, no, I totally completely understand, understand. Yeah. um how long will that take? exactly and so we're gonna find out i mean hopefully he's ready for this fight hopefully he came in prepared he looked physically in great shape for that fight that was supposed to happen in Riyadh, and it didn't happen so guess what not a big deal and even when i was talking to patricio patricio's like i don't want to fight him He's like, I know his father. I knew his father. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't blame like, that, that's one I, He's of those, like, I've yeah. known Gabriel since he was a young boy. He's like, I don't want to fight him, but we both know this is business. And, you know, we make our money and we go home. Uh, Justin Gonzalez, though, um, I think it's the perfect format for him. He wants to be a busy fighter. He's always training. He's yeah. in phenomenal shape. He's, he's that engine that never stops. He keeps pushing the pace. The J yeah, What he's got to do, though, is he's got to tighten up a lot of his, his positioning. That's where he's he's wasting some energy when now that he's hit that upper caliber of fighter, he's got to start sure. utilizing his energy or n not utilizing it, not, not, not using energy not in bad it. areas and stay yeah. a little bit tighter with his defense, stay a little bit more um, in, in tune with like uh, right in that range of always putting pressure and, and grinding on them and not leaving himself open so much. Tighten everything up just a tiny bit. I think you're going to see a lot more success out of him. Goichi Yamauchi and uh, Naaman Gracie. This is a rematch. Rematch. Yep. Where Goichi was able to yeah. knock out Naaman Gracie. And Goichi coming off uh, his injury from the patella tendon tear. Na na nasty patella <laughs> blown to patella tendon based upon a kick by Michael Venom yeah. Page. So we're going to see where he's at with that. But yeah, Bubba Jenkins going up against Kai Kamaka. That's a great fight. I really like that fight. The real question is, can Kai Kamaka mm. stop Bubba Jenkins wrestling? You know, Kai Kamaka is fast. And at this point, he's faster than Bubba. Yes. This, you know, Bubba's older as far as, you know, looking at both guys. Kai Kamaka's got speed. He's got strength. He's got very good stand-up. He's got a good ground game, but he can't be underneath Bubba Jenkins. So it's a question of if Bubba's able to take him down and stay on top of him. Bubba can get definitely get a win against Kai. Absolutely. Kai. Enrique Barzola versus Adam Boric. I mean, this should be a fun fight. You got Adam, uh, Enrique, who's someone who just pushes the pace. He'll take a shot, give a shot. He's going to be in your face. He's going to lose the first round, but he's going to win the second and third as hard as he, or try to win the second and third as much try. as he possibly can. And Adam Boric being out for how long now? He is out for close to over a yeah, year it's been a long time yeah, over a year his last fight was against yes Patricio. it was oh wow two years that was almost Octo yeah almost two years back to october of 20 wow almost two years yep. um but but he's beaten a lot of very good yes, yes. talented fighters It'd be jeremy kennedy he's talented. Burnell, jeremy yeah, kennedy yeah, you know, mike hamill uh yeah. he lost to darian caldwell aaron pico yeah, aaron P pat, pat curran Curran. Yeah. yeah he's had some good I mean, wins man he's yeah. He's got some great and wins. Everyone I've talked to about Adam Borch inside the Kill Cliff gym said, man, he's just a Tasmanian devil. The guy can, he'll spar with guys, you know, 185, doesn't care. He'll, you yeah. know, he'll grapple with guys that are three time All Americans, four time All American wrestlers. I mean, doesn't give a crap. Like he's like hard to take down. He's grinding. He's always pushing the pace. You know, there was a, he's good. There was buzz around the gym for a while that Chandler didn't like to spar with him leading in the fights because, you know, he just was. Tall, long, and lengthy, and just had post threats, knees kind of to the body, push kicks, those type of things. You know, um, those are the things we heard. Tamura Hisria versus Brett Johns. Man, I tell you what, you know, Brett's obviously had the uh, more experience and stuff. He's up against yeah. it with Tamura. I, I don't, I don't see how Hisria, Brett Johns get the win in this fight. If, I don't either. Hisria is, uh, man, he's got everything. Yeah. He's got good stand up. He's got phenomenal wrestling. He's tough as hell. He, you know, dude, he did a backflip in the fight 
when a guy you know tried to single leg on him, did oh, the whole yeah. flying. Me- remember Colot? Yeah, Kerry Colot. Kerry mm-hmm. Colot and the, does the the backflip. He did that in an MMA fight. I go, oh, dude, please. He is a stud. Brett Johns is going to have a very tough fight right there. Next fight. Ah, you have Strapoli against Ramazanov, and this is one of those. I can't tell you. They're both really good. Ramazanov is just. He's got it all. He is good in the grappling. He's got good stand-up. He's got power in his hands. Staropoli might be up against him. And Don, how do you say his last name? Maj? Don Maj. Versus our guy right here, Brandon Ward. Brandon Ward, I'll tell you what. Don Maj better hold on, man. (laughs) Brandon Ward's coming. Have you not seen his... uh, So there's there's a monster called Java, Java something. He pours the monster in a cup. And then he pours his protein, chocolate protein powder in there, and he stirs it up with like a with like a, a thing from the job site. It's like an old rickety, rusted out thing. He stirs it up there, and he just downs it. I'm like, ah, I'm not sure that's the best training. But have you not seen him? Probably not. He's fucking dude, shredded. He's, he's, he's always, always shredded. He's, physically, the guy is just remarkable. He's had a lot of hard things and you know, a lot of th- – Bad things that have happened in his life and stuff. He seems like he's in a good place can, right now. Dude, if he can get himself set, he's the trouble for anybody. Because he very similar, you know, when you're taking a look at styles, he's very like Ray Cooper like. Yeah. You know, when you look at the power that he possesses, he does have good wrestling. It takes someone like a Logan yeah. Storley to to overcome his wrestling. But uh Brendan Ward is a dog and he will come after you and you know he he doesn't go to judges' decisions yeah. ever. So a couple of people to keep your eyes on, right? Um, you've got Luca Poklik, who's a great wrestler out of Fresno area there. Tyler yeah. Diamond, Otto Rodriguez. That should be a good little scrap back and forth. Yeah, Tyler yeah. Diamond's always fun to watch fight. He's a scrappy, uh, scrappy fighter. And then you've got uh the unknown fighter. Jordan Oliver, the baby. unknown fighter is always Jordan the Oliver. toughest fighter to fight. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but you got Jordan Oliver starting that off, and Jordan Oliver Oliver was just an absolute stud wrestler out of Oklahoma yep. State. And the dude is just a, a Just beast. an animal, man. And a really, really great guy. Really great guy. Great guy. Uh, o- Oklahoma State uh, coach, uh, just retired. Uh, yep, John, John Smith. He, he's, it's all yep, it's over. all over. Look, he did it right. He, 30, 35 years? Yeah, I believe so. 35, 36. I look back at his career when I was young, and I posted about this today. Get to tip your hat to him, man. Like, when I was young, I didn't realize what I was watching. And then when oh. I realized that as life went on and I was wrestling more in the room and seeing all the things that he could do, his flexibility, his dexterity, the way that he that stuffed was, single leg, the way he defended. You just said the one, his flexibility and the way that he could get himself, his the way his legs would go out, you, you would never teach it to somebody. You can't. But the way that he would shoot the low single and how he would come out the backside of it, he was just... I'm going to just say it. John Smith is the best American wrestler of all time. He's, I don't think yeah, you know, everyone everyone goes with Dan Gable. I know, you know, that's no. the, the big name. John Smith did more by far. He's just unbelievable in what he was able to accomplish. What two gold yeah. medals? What four world championships? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, something Look, like- I look I look at him and I just think of like a lot of the younger wrestlers these days now have shaped their game around the way that he wrestled with the flexibility and the way that they defend single legs and the way they defend takedowns. All these young kids now can all do the splits back in 1984, yeah. uh, 88, 84, all those, they couldn't do that shit. Not every wrestler was doing that. They have weaponized you remember when his, their flexibility. His legs, his, his lower legs would go out like this while his ass was on the ground and he'd be spinning underneath someone. And I'd be like, if I did that, my my knees John can't even fucking touch his blowing toes. out. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It just he was remarkable. Yes, he was. Remarkable. And uh, like congratulate congratulations on an incredible career as a coach too. And you think of all the people that he put Daniel Cormier yeah, he won yep. too right there. Jordan Oliver, you got Jordan Oliver, Daniel yeah, Cormier, Jordan Kyle Oliver. Crutchmere. I mean, you've got so many fighters that have come out of that area there. And um, look, and I was actually someone who sent me this thing saying. The two top schools that have produced the best MMA fighters, Arizona State and Oklahoma State, that have contributed okay. the best MMA fighters are those two schools. So yep. far? 
we get the most out of those two schools. It's going to be sad well, to see. Because you're going all the way back to Randy Couture, man. He yes, was he was. Day. So so was Don Fry. Oh, was he? I didn't know that. I never knew Don Fry. Who we just talked about. Don Fry was Arizona State and Oh, Oklahoma wow. State. So he was a bandwagon. He jumped bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped. jumped, 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 jumped. He jumped. Uh, that was back then when you couldn't. You would lose like a year of eligibility when you jumped. That yeah. sucks. That's it. That sucks. Don was probably just chasing tail. Anyways, all right. Hey, that's going to wrap up our PFL talk. Uh, what else you got for us, Dave? Let's talk boxing before we wrap okay, this thing up. Okay, let's talk boxing. Oh. Haney versus Garcia. What you got for us? Devin Haney. <laughs> Ryan Garcia. Oh, they had a little face-off today uh, at the top of some pushy, building. Pushy, pushy, pushy. I mean, look, this is all just to sell <laughs> the fight. Ryan Garcia has been doing a great job selling this fight because he's fucking... Ryan Garcia is great at selling every fight. Yeah, that he's fucking lately. one flew over the cuckoo's nest lately. But Devin, Devin, Haney, Devin Haney's trouble, dude. You, you think Devin Haney's going to get him? You yeah. think so? Yes. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Oh, look, I, th I think everyone oh, wants to know hold. where... Oh. where uh, Are you wanting no, to I'm not betting. place I'm not betting a on bet? On this shit. <laughs> I, I don't like either one of these fighters that much to actually put money uh, on them. Um, look, I, look De I think... I want to know where... Look, Ryan Garcia has been fucking cuckoo lately. Doing all this crazy stuff. He posted some video the other day of like him doing a proposal. And it was kind of a, a weird type of proposal on his social media. He's talking about people coming to get him and making him do this and talking about like not sucking dicks and all. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's a really weird. It was really weird. People were wondering if like, they should check on him. I don't know if it was all just like a gimmick to kind of get underneath someone else's skin or to make people think that he's not training. But I mean, I've also seen a bunch of videos like that little scream at the end of the, the push. I don't know. It just seems everything seems a little weird right now, but we're going to find out. Look, this is what happens. You get up in the in that ring. You're going to find out what happens. So someone's going to walk, yeah. two people are going to walk in, one person's going to walk out a winner. How do you see that fight it. going? I I, th I actually think that Devin Haney, I think he's going to win. It might go the, to a decision, but he's going to win most of the okay. time. Okay. He's just going to slowly take over the fight. And uh, he's just, he's a very difficult fighter to get after. He's got beautiful defense. He's got a good offensive output as far as volume. He's not a heavy hitter. But Ryan Garcia is not a super heavy hitter. I mean, some people got fast some hands. people thought Devin Haney lost his last fight. You know, yeah, some people. Uh, What's his? Excuse me. Yeah, What's yeah he's record? undefeated still. I get it, John. I get it. And okay. but Ryan Garcia's okay. only got the one loss. To Tank. Uh, That's yeah, Tank. tank uh, to Javante, yeah, so I mean, like, Davis. I mean, and, and I'm sorry, but Haney don't have Tank power. No. And so that's my my thing is if I'm going speed for speed, Ryan Garcia's but, not slow. But tank, but tank's not hard to hit. That's true. He'll 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 stand right in the middle. Yeah, he of the will because he knows if he just touches Devin, you. Devin Haney doesn't do that. Devin Haney. Doesn't he's not do going to do that. The, the 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 fight that you're thinking that Devin Haney lost was the Lomachenko yes. fight. That yeah. wasn't his last. Oh, it fight. wasn't his last fight. Sorry, okay. my bad. That wasn't. See, his like last I said, fight. I'm not okay. I'm not much of a fan. But you know, I actually thought Lomachenko. I I had Lomachenko. Up yes, on I did fight. too. But but there were se there were several rounds you could look at, and they could have gone both ways. Yeah. And so. Hey, it's just, yeah, I know. It wasn't a robbery. I didn't it say is. it was a robbery. No, that word no, gets no, thrown no, around way wasn't. too much. But, yep. but I had Loma winning the fight I too. Thought, I had Loma winning it too. Um, no. no. But look, I want to see which Ryan Garcia shows up, man. The 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 kooky one right now that's all over social media, or the one that the train. He looks physically. He looks good. I always felt like he looked a little bit leaner before, but I mean, this is a good fight for him. I want to know who's going to be the look Haney up in there, man. Just getting up, super mad, man. I felt like that. I felt like that push was super necessary. <laughs> oh, All right. Well, hey, uh, look, tune in for that fight. That fight's this weekend. What day, what night is that? It's on Saturday night, but what time? Uh, I just have April okay. 20th on What's here. What's the PFL? The PFL is on Friday or Saturday? Friday. 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 So you get double nights of Friday. fights. They, they probably didn't want to go against the Garcia and Haney fight. Good on their call. Good on their call. <laughs> Maybe funny. we can get some sound on this production this week. All right, guys. Let's. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy the show, make sure you guys go to uh, OnlyFans. What is it? Uh, not OnlyFans. <laughs> go to, <laughs> go to <laughs> WayneInMerch.com. WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our shirts. Really sharp. Have you ever yeah. heard anyone say something like, you're sharp as it, a marble? Yeah, I actually have. I actually have. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it's 
Go somewhere. Yeah, go somewhere. Go, go to WayneAmers.com. Pick some of our apparel that's available there. And uh, I'm in contact with our apparel guy. And uh, we're trying to get you guys up some new designs, some new artwork, and all this other stuff. So hopefully this doesn't take oh. forever like all the other things I'm working on. So, <laughs> John, take us away, buddy. For everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed it. Mark Coleman, give us a call. I'd love to have you on the show. And I love you, brother, even though you're mad at me. For everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you. The hammer. <laughs> the hammer.